There's a big tournament, I understand, at uh, the hotel, Waterloo Hotel in Blackpool. Yes, I think there's quite a bit of money around for uh, Crown Queen players over here too. There's a lot of betting, I understand, on every bowl. Oh, is there? Oh, yeah. okay. But they play all over the place, don't they? There's no set position, you just go all over yes, the place. Yes, I can't, I can't imagine how it works. I'd love to have seen it, though. Yes. So, it's uh, hard, I suppose. I guess you might do a commentary on every game at once. Yes, be very interesting. So we're underway with our first poll in the women's final here at Manchester. Commonwealth Games looking for the gold or silver, New Zealand or South Africa, and she's coming down this backhand side. That's interesting. That might be the first mistake she's made. Ellen Corker. But it's very difficult, that uh, hand. Joe Edwards says to Sharon Sims, come down the forehand. Let's try it down there first of all. Well, sometimes I have to say with Sharon, it's uh, hard to know which hand she's playing. She, she stands very straight, and then she flicks that front foot over, doesn't she? She does, yes. She's got uh, an unusual stance on the mat, but uh, she finds the line very well with um, bringing that foot over in the direction. Great start, isn't it, from Sharon Sims? Very adjacent to the jack with a first bowl. Now, Ellen Corker. Short again. I uh, just wonder sometimes uh, what uh, pre preparatory work uh, the coaches and the management put in because we saw that that backhand was very difficult in the women's singles. About this length too, three quarter length was about the sort of length that uh, they played a couple of hands. And this forehand that uh, Sharon Sims is playing was very, very kind. Yes, it's unusual. I would have thought that the uh, South Africans would have been uh, having a look at that rink while they were playing the singles oh, okay. to work out what uh, would be the best to play. So an opportunity now to change hands because she has got that bowl on the shoulder and that's what Ellen Cork is going to do. Come down the forehand, follow Sharon Sims down. The rest or the bowl and that's just it. a little bit of weight this time. Short with the first two, put a bit more extra weight on. Yeah, I think the, the first two looked like they were a couple of nervous deliveries. She looked as though she bounced them away a little bit and took the weight off, so probably got into that one nicely. Nice delivery of Sharon Sims. And two, see, right on target. She's got a big opportunity though, hasn't she now, Ellen Corker? She can rest on either of those bowls just to, to left the jack. We'll see them in a moment. There they are there. Two opportunities to rest on. She's played tighter line. Could promote one of her own blue disc bowls. Blue disc bowls for the South Africans, or Jade perhaps, is a better description. Well, it looks quite blue on our monitor, I thought. Um, yes, they do look uh, quite blue. We'll call them blue. Yes, I get a bit confused because I'm just worried because uh, George Shaw, who's one of the organisers, said, well, they're Jade. They're meant to be part of the colour combinations that you'll see around the green. I said, oh, fine. They look blue to me somehow. But... Um, we know that the New Zealanders definitely have the red disc on their bowls and very adjacent, good uh, start from Sharon Sims. But by the same token, there's still plenty of opportunities for the skip, Jill Hackland. There's the uh, target. You can see that New Zealand has two shots. Yes, great start from Sharon. She'll be um, more than happy with that start. Well, there's blue sky too, bit of heat yes. on their backs. Yes, they'll be getting their rain wear off uh, shortly, I would think. There's a little bit of mist over Manchester, but there's clearing skies over Heaton Park. Always seems misty in Manchester. Yes, it does. This um, is their summer, you know. Yes. But I can show you, funny enough, out at Heaton Park, it just always seems to open up a bit uh, on the bus ride. And it's uh, like that today as well. Not quite here with the first Jewel Hackland. What now for Joe Edwards? Will well, she come around the backhand rather than the forehand, perhaps? Yeah, I think she's a bit uh, concerned about uh, turning that bowl in. Unfortunately, on these greens, uh, there's uh, more often than not some short bowls, and you just have to really play through and hope perhaps they can use the uh, shorter bowls. But if she got through that hole and dragged that jack back, yeah. she'd be in a very strong position, wouldn't she, Joe yeah. Edwards? That's the sort of shock she can play down that uh, backhand side. And uh, I guess uh, for Jewel Hackland, she's got a chance of just promoting her own bowls, which were in the running. You'll see those in a minute on the left-hand side of your screen. There they are. Opportunity just to promote onto the blue bowls. That's one there. And she's played it and got the shot. Come down. Come down there. Look to land the bowl. Movement of the jack's great. 
Yes, yeah, so got really, Sharon's got a really good position for Joe there, so she's got a great opportunity to play that shot. Yeah, just turn over the shot bowl and the jack will come back and they'll be in the count. Just to get a slice, you won't get it with that. The weight was good, wasn't it? Yeah, very good weight. Often that shot's quite hard though, isn't it? That, just that yeah, weight. Yes, that, just that yard through shot yeah. that we've found, uh, everyone has found difficult on these weighted greens. This is the, well, that hasn't helped too much. It's still the opportunity there. You'll see Joe Edwards now. She's removed her wet weather gear and you can see the silver fern of New Zealand. Warming up here, getting a nice afternoon just to finish off our action at Manchester. She likes the look of it. She would need a big slide and she just promotes another bowl, but that's not a problem. She's still got a bowl left. It's given her a big chance to get that jack back. Get a bowl here. You certainly do, uh, Jill Hackman. You need a bowl behind the head. And uh, Ellen Cork is saying, yes, yeah, you could come and have a look. Very dangerous at the back, isn't she? Yes, it's, uh, they have no cover at all at the back. That's why it's just so important for your leads when they're leading off. They'd rather have bowls behind the head uh, pr prior to. Uh, See the group of red disc bowls there? One, two, three, four. If just turns it over, she'll have the shots. Well, it's fairly cloudy and over Manchester, but uh, hopefully that's not coming our way. Oh, no, we hope not. Very little breeze, no wind at all. There's beautiful shadows here at Heaton Park, isn't there? So bright sunshine. And a lot of the spectators are not putting on Max. They're taking them off. One shot. Oh, that's, that's pretty good, all right, but still the chance there. Good to see the whole New Zealand team here supporting the uh, New Zealanders and also the whole of the South African sport team just arrived. Of course, they're a bit divided. They're not only watching the pair, they're also watching Bobby Donnelly in the singles. And uh, Jeremy Henry leads that to 5-1. Yes, I was talking to one of the uh, South Africans on the bus this morning and he said that uh, they won five medals at last Com Games and that was their aim again and that's uh, exactly what they've done. They'll go home with five medals, not quite sure of the colour of them, of the two of them yet, but definitely would have five medals again, so they're more than happy. It's a very good position. Here he is playing with far more weight now, Joe Edwards, looking for the target and she slips past. I think that's the sort of weight that you need to play on these greens, as we said earlier. Um, uh, just a little bit of weight through uh, seems very difficult to find a line. There we are, that's uh, the Northern Ireland player, Jeremy Henry. He's up against uh, Bobby Donnelly. 2-0 to South Africa. There he is, there's uh, Bobby Donnelly, the replacement singles player after Donny Pickett uh, broke his leg. I know that he's been watching a lot of the bowls action in South Africa. Uh, from our commentary from here. I hope you're enjoying it. Yesterday, of course, it was a big day for Donnie because his uh, future mother-in-law was playing. Oh, was he? Oh. She was playing against um, the... Uh, oh, so it, was a, it was a loss, unfortunately, for her, but... Um, oh, that's right. Uh, Lorna, Lorna Lord, Trigwell, Trigwell her, yeah. her, her da Lorna's daughter... Uh, Hayley. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, Donnie's future mother-in-law. Oh, OK. I asked uh, Simon Butter uh, when the wedding was, he said it's imminent. Oh, was it? Oh, OK. <laughs> of course, it was, it was a, little a, Karen... bit, a little bit delayed at the moment with the broken uh, ankle. Yes, and the, the mother-in-law away playing bowls. I suppose they have to fit all the bowls in. Yes. But um, first bowl then, played from the lead for South Africa, Alan Corker. That's uh, very, very wide. This isn't easy at all, this... Um, hand, that uh, forehand she was playing, and Sharon Sims is trying the forehand as well. To be fair, either hand is difficult playing this way, and I think whoever gets the hand first will be a major advantage in this game. Yeah, Sharon found the line good, she just uh, needs a touch of weight there. It's got a little bit more certainty, the forehand. 
It's very much like the the inside the rink uh, next door that played uh, when we uh, we did some commentary earlier on with the um, bowls. It, it's playing very similar the rink, isn't it? To it is. that uh, rink seven. We're on rink eight here. It's good uh, second bowl for Ellen Corker. Have it away, but she's still got the jack. Very, very good bowl from Sharon Sims. Well, she got the line beautifully, didn't she? She did, as you said. Uh, she got the line perfect with the first one, and she just uh, added that little bit of weight, and it came in there really well. So, over 15 ends, of course, the pairs. The singles we had earlier in the final was uh, 21 shots. This is 15 ends, long journey. I think the bowlers would uh, really prefer to be playing the 21 ends that uh, normally international players. And as it's worked out, there's been plenty of uh, time between games. They could have easily fitted in the 21 ends. So uh, I think perhaps next time the players especially will be voting to play that full 21 ends. Will you have a say? Um, probably not. <laughs> Sharon Sims with another, well she's right on target again this afternoon, Sharon Sims the lead for New Zealand, now it's the turn of Ellen Corker, she might be tempted to go down that backhand side, that's what she's going to do, yes. this is hard this hand, see it hang out there, see it yes, hang out there, it's yes. nearly going against the bias wasn't it, it's a very big straightener. Mm. And that Sharon Sims has mastered the forehand is definitely to her good. And also because she's got bowls in the running, she uh, has got it blocked up for South Africa. Yeah, it's got a nice draw, hasn't it? It has, yes. Look at that, that's taking grass. Mm. Uh, excellent bowling from Sharon there, two on the head and one past. Look great in their uh, all black and the silver ferns, don't they? Certainly do. Outstanding. The South Africans got two uh, outfits. There's the score at the moment. South Africa leading 2-0, but they've got two outfits. They've got the white outfit, and they've also got a, a traditional yellow and green one, which uh, I'd probably prefer on the white one. Yes, uh, perhaps this will their lucky shirt, maybe. Do you have that sort of thing? Oh, definitely. I certainly do. Oh, I understand you do. <laughs> And for South Africa, two shots. Oh, there's uh, Marlene Castle and Stu Scott in the commentary box. Nice to see you in South Africa and around the world. Chance here. Oh, it gets the jack. She played it well, didn't she? Tightened a line, did uh, Jill Hackland, and just got a bit of a bit of the jack. Let's have another look at the line. See how she tightened it, Marlene. Got yes. the chance. Yeah. And the jack. That was definitely the shot up through those two goals. This will be interesting, this, because the jack's been moved to the right of our screen. It'll mean that uh, this bowl might have a chance because it won't have that straightener taken to effect. And that's the shot itself. What a reply from Joe Edwards. Yes. No doubt Jill won't be short here. She's got two second shots, so she'll be either up to the bowl or the jack. Could come up, cut across oh. as it loses weight. Yes, didn't quite have the weight. Yep, it's a very good um, head, this. Yeah, it's been changing, hasn't it? Good movement. This has got a big chance too if it sits and stays and gets the touch up. Joe Edwards has mastered the conditions quickly. Yes, he has. They, they've both, uh, Sharon and Joe, they've just played superbly all week. The other thing is, Marlene, they have uh, grown together, haven't they, as a pair? They uh, have, yes. yes have, they haven't been in existence for too long. This is always narrow. Ooh, good enough to get the shot, but lucky. Yeah, she's very lucky there, but she, I guess she had the weight. And Any movement of the jack will help Joe Edwards. She's on the run. 
You quite like the line, don't you? What a bowl from Jo Edwards. Well, she's playing all the shots. Good rink, Marlene. Yes, it's uh, playing very well down that uh, back inside there. I think the movement of the jack might have helped it. That, that's yeah. right. It's probably uh, they're probably able to play a reasonably straight line that holds up. She's got another chance. Look at this. Well, that's a magnificent uh, end played by Jewel Hacklin. She had the final say. Now it's Joe Edwards. Let's look at this again. Look at the line. Absolutely beautiful. And the shot. They're pretty pleased too. The yeah. South African pairing. No, there's been some great balls played in this end, Stu, hasn't there? From both teams. Marvellous. Right from the start. Mm. Now, Joe Edwards again. She just wants to push through that blue disc bolt just to the right of the red disc. See there? She's got the line. Just a fraction weight again, looking for that uh, blue disc. Just slipping past. One shot to South Africa, as you see there. Here's the jade colour of the stickers that are on the South Africans' bowls. And... Uh, Bowl for bowl, Jewel Hackland and Joe Edwards, and then off the front to a great battle between Ellen Corker and Sharon Sims. I think Sharon uh, at this stage holds the, uh, the tally between the two leads, doesn't she? But uh, bit of blue sky there, 3-0, South Africa leading, so that's a good sign. A little bit of blue sky above us. like to see that. Always a chance that uh, the sun's going to stay out for a little while. Conditions are nice, though. You'll see the crowd now. No raincoats, no umbrellas, sitting quite comfortably. Be, be probably 15 degrees now, up a degree from when the match started because the sunshine's come out. Yeah, it's, uh, well, you can see around there the people just in their short sleeves. It's certainly not, uh, not cool outside at all. That mist hardly ever leaves Manchester. Beautiful parklands of Heaton Park. And then you look uh, down on the commentary position and then the rink right below that in the middle of the picture. Now the cameras along the rink giving some great shots, including that uh, target shot too, which shows who's got shots. So it's a great uh, scene. See, Alan just played that one uh, one end down that uh, back hand yeah, side and just so has decided to swap to the uh, forehand. That was so. a very good decision, I think. Very good decision on her part, I think. It's a game of immense pressure because not only you have to play your bowls, you've got to decide whether it's the right hand to play too, Marlon. Yeah, it is. It's been, uh, as I say, it's taken a lot of uh, lot of thought before each game is to deciding which you... Trial ends are really, really important to deciding or having somebody have a look at the rink prior to when you're playing on it to give you an idea what uh, is the best hand to play. Do you get a, um, any help at all from the, the coaching staff? Oh yes, uh, yeah. Stu and, uh, and Peter Shaw have been very good. They've been uh, having a look at the rinks uh, prior to when we, as soon as we know what uh, rink we're playing on, if we're not available, the players are not available to go and have a look at the rink and have a look at uh, the previous game, well one of uh, either Stu or Peter will go and have a look for us. So it's, been, uh, it's been a great team effort uh, from the whole team as a, as a whole. It's been, uh, it's been really great to be involved. Very much the same too on the South African side with uh, Simon Botta and also uh, Lewis uh, Klopper. He uh, has a look and he plays a part. Good job. Played pretty well down that backhand side, didn't she? Yeah, it did, yes. Anne Muir and uh, Stu Butter and Mike Coonahan, the pitch on the right there from New Zealand. shots at the moment for South Africa. 
for the ball and the running. She's uh, gone down that backhand side again. I think it's a bit harder. There we are, that's the shot. She played off her own ball, it was at the running, played it well. That meant that uh, South Africa couldn't play down that side, the forehand side, the favoured side, and uh, played it beautifully. Let's look at it again. Gets the assistance and ends up. Been good crowds out here all uh, over the bowling uh, two weeks, almost two weeks, hasn't it, Stuart? Yeah, it certainly it's has. Mm. It's been, uh, I understand a lot of the England clubs have bussed um, spectators in from their clubs, which is good. And uh, it's a pity with the weather because I wonder today whether they've got a walk up crowd as well, Marlene, if yes, um, they've been good. Yes, I think they would have got a much better crowd today. People were a bit concerned about the weather when they um, probably woke this morning. Well, I'm sure um, Kerry Clark and uh, the organisers were concerned. <laughs> It's been very lucky, haven't they, to they get this through? Been, yes. The day before yesterday was looking uh, very worrying because uh, the forecast as well wasn't uh, wasn't very good. Okay. See, so just the one shot. Do you keep it here. If you play on to that, our ball will go. But we've got two others that might tell you. Great view of the four greens. The one on the left is the one being used in the singles for women. Uh, sorry, the pairs for women. The one on the right was for the men's singles. So both in operation. I think this is the surface, this one here that we're watching. Very good cover. I'm, I'm sure the players will be very pleased that they've moved their television rink in one. You can see where it's been... Uh, uh, very worn down uh, where people have been standing while the greens played the other way. But well, you might fancy it for another shot. What do you think? Just the one still? Just the one. Have a look at um, some assistance for that second shot in a moment so you can see at home who's got uh, the second shot just the one yeah just the one shot the blue disc bowl just uh, below that uh, shot bowls the second shot great hand that Sunglasses for Joe Edwards today, so good sign that it's a little bit of summer. Do they have a different make of bowl in South Africa, Marlon? Well, no, I think they just play with the same uh, um, brands that we all play yeah. with. They would have probably changed their bowls to uh, a medium weight. They play with the heavy weights like we do at home, but they would have obviously changed. A very good try, try from uh, Jill Hackland. Last bowl though for Joe Edwards. She has one. Not easy to get another there, Marlene. I suppose she could rest on that uh, blue disc bowl we see there if she slips yeah. past there. Yeah, she could easily uh, just uh, get a rest on that and sort of flop back. Well, this is what happens all of a sudden in Manchester. It's summer one moment and it's winter the next. Paul oh. Girdler not rushing too much to get his uh, jacket on, but uh, it's, I'll tell you what, it's raining fairly heavily too. This will be the story of the day, on and off with uh, raincoats, up and down with umbrellas. 
Gonna slip under. New Zealand on the board with a single, and so it's 3 1. Yeah, that Kiwi support crew in the background then. Well, there's plenty of blue sky, isn't there? Yes. Great shot from the high camera. And 3-1, the scoreline for South Africa. I think it's just one of those days where the forecast is keeping pretty well up to what we thought. Showery weather, showers throughout the day. As you can see there, the umbrellas are pretty quickly and it is pouring with rain. This is quite heavy. It's the heaviest it's been probably since 8 o'clock this morning. We've got a heavy shower. This is interesting. The girls have obviously decided that uh, they want to play almost uh, a full-length end against the uh, South African girls. Yeah, first uh, chance for New Zealand with the jack and uh, they are going deep. No doubt they would have had uh, one of the support crew have a look at uh, the South African girls when they played the, some of their previous matches to see what length they played. This is the length that um, the Malaysian singles player played a lot, especially early on, and she uh, had a lot of success. It'll be interesting with uh, Sharon Sims down the backhand now. No, she's going forehand, so this will be good. She's uh, got the line on most occasions so far. Reasonable sort of start. Interesting that the South African lead. Ellen Cork is following her down, so that must be the preferred hand going this way, Marlene. Yes, looks like it's going to be. There we are. It's uh, the plastic rubbish bag keeping it off the head, and uh, that was the Marks and Spencer special two for the price of one. Well, what about that outfit? Either he's got a very big body or he's in a tent. nuns all in white <laughs> chance here Sharon Sims has drawn shot itself there we are parks for red disco right next to the jack chance though isn't there Marlene the rest Yes, there's uh, lots of opportunities there for South Africa. Oh, she's dropped it very short. That could be New Zealand's advantage, though. Uh, there it really is some quite amazing uh, raincoats around, isn't there? There is. I think they might take them off soon. Rain seems to have stopped. Oh, we played up the ball through enough though. Still the shot to New Zealand, the red disc. The only thing with some of those plastic bags, Marlene, you get very, very hot inside them. Yes, well, that's quite humid out there, so. Yeah, it's over 70% humidity. A little bit, bit of protection there for Stu in front of the, the shot bowl. Uh, we'll have to get, perhaps get some of those out of the way before they can play through to that uh, shot. So that's um, it's a magnificent view from that high tower. I don't think I'll go up and have a look myself at it, but um, 
I definitely won't be going anywhere near that tower, Marlene. No, I, won't go. I don't think I'd fancy that either. Oh, it's very high. He's had a lovely day up there, I'm sure. I wonder if he's got anybody to talk to at all. Must be very lonely. It must be. When uh, that lightning and thunder came the other day, I guess. Oh, he, he came would. down very quickly. Oh, I bet he did, jeez. <laughs> One of the loneliest jobs. I suppose you might have um, a Walkman or something like that up there. Well, that's even made it harder for the South Africans to get through there. Another one uh, in the front there. Well, here comes the heat again. And uh, it's just outstanding when it's nice. It's uh, really beautiful. There's shadows again. There we are. There's the shot of the two rinks. That's the rink we're playing these pairs on, right this he one here. And this is the skip for South Africa, Jill Hackland. Helping along, and does she get the shot? Well, it's tight. What do you think, Marlene? I think it's one, two, South Africa. Uh, difficult to tell with the shadow there. Here it is again. She rattles the wood, doesn't she? Yes. And does she get the shot? Helps her along through the gap. for some assistance, uh, Marlene, to see if we can see who's got shot. Yes. Must be close. I won't come back from there. No, I won't back come back from there. It's for certain always very wide. Definitely South Africa, isn't it? Yes, looks very much like it. No doubt about that. Technology's never let us down yet, Marlene. Johnson looking on, the New Zealand number three and the four, and the grey there. I just spoke with Sean this morning and asked him how he enjoyed the games, and he said yes, he's, uh, he's really enjoyed it, and it's made him hungry for perhaps another visit to another set of games. Well, the next one will be Melbourne, or perhaps Aberdeen for the World Bowls. She's sprinting down after this one, she likes it. Well, it wasn't quite as good as she made out, was it? Oh, we know the situation, Joe. You're one down. I understand in the indoor game that uh, the target is available for the players to look at, Marlene. Have you experienced that when you um, won the yes, World uh, Indoor Singles? That's right. They have, uh, the, um, they have a little television at your end from which you're playing from, so you can actually have a look at the head because you're not allowed to go, like uh, here at the games here, you're not allowed to go to the head until after your third bowl's played. So they have a little television that you can have a look at, uh, look at a little monitor. There we are. Tell you what. That's not a little bit of shadow that's uh, confusing yeah, there, there, a little is bit it? Shadow. Yes, yeah. I think uh, a little bit of shadow there might Watch make Watch out, Joe, you're in the target. That target reminds me of um, the archery at uh, the Commonwealth Ga at the um, Olympic Games, Marlene, I was involved with the target. Oh, yes. Very similar sort of look. Well, well, that's the black rubbish bag at uh, one pence from Woolworths. Mind you, I think it's probably inflated uh, uh, rubbish bags uh, in England, and I understand are about 19 pence. Well, no government surely will put a tax on rubbish bags. 
but I understand they're going to, so they use less of them. Yeah, there's no doubt now, is there? Definitely one to South Africa. That uh, just pushed it forward, took out any doubt we had. There's the score line. 15 ends, South Africa leading by four to one, four one after four of the 15 ends. And a little bit of blue sky. Good crowd in. It's warming up. You live in Auckland, Mullen, you have about uh, three seasons in one, you'd be used to this. <laughs> yes, actually, we've had, uh, over the last uh, probably nine months, we've had uh, more than our share of rain in Auckland. But it's never very cold, that's one thing about Auckland, it never gets too cold. That's interesting, Ellen's gone back to that backhand um, side again. And you can understand why now, right next to the jack, good opener. Three quarter length the end, they, they both really want to play the same length, don't they? The New, Zealand and, uh, New Zealanders and the South Africans, Marley. Yes, perhaps uh, New Zealand had a little bit longer than that, but... Uh... She's following that down, Sharon Sims down that backhand. She's got two chances then, hasn't she? She can afford to be a little bit tight. Not going to be there. Very vital if you're down on the head and if you've got a, a, a bowl in front, you've got to be playing through it, Marlene. We might be just a little bit short on occasions here. Oh, it's, uh, it's very easy to... Uh, Commentate. To stro <laughs> just to drop that, uh, that yard, very easy. Yeah, it's a lot easier up here, isn't it? It uh, certainly is, yes. Tricky conditions. Back here, Sharon. You're in the line good, mate. Very confident uh, statements from Sharon, from uh, Joe Edwards, rather, for Sharon Sims. And it's uh, very important, isn't it, to have a confident attitude? Oh, definitely. Clear direction. And she played it well. Shot that far behind. Trying any. Come on. Oh, Very well indeed. Sharon Sims, that unusual stance with one foot off the mat, and then she swings it across to the backhand. But the all important part, I guess, Marlene, as a coach, is that uh, you come down in a good pendulum. It doesn't matter where you start. Exactly. Yeah, Stu Butt has done a great job with the, uh, the whole squad, men and women, this year. It's, um, it's been great to have him on board. Well, a very enthusiastic, enthusiastic Kiwi supporter. Of a voice in the wilderness.
international uh, pairs with the four bowl pairs are certainly uh, a different game. It's uh, very much, uh, normally it's a leads game, but very much a skips game with four bowls coming from each of the, uh, the two skips. Yeah, they've got a big chance of making a difference, haven't they? They do. It tends to generally change around a little. I was inter interested yesterday in the singles morning. If you asked the marker, were you able to go down and uh, have a look at the head? Yes, um, the rules were that you weren't allowed to go to the head until after you played a third bowl, but uh, um, we learned only late, uh, very late in the piece that uh, if you asked the marker, you could go after your second bowl. Mm -hmm. A lot of shadows now, you can see, so the sun is out. about the same position, Molly. Not much change in the head, they're just uh, slipping past. Yes. Balls in the running there. Doesn't want to go near those. He's cut a green. Yeah, it's a good opportunity for Joe there. She's got two balls to uh, she could even uh, part those and come through and uh, have a little look at the jack. Well, she's got to do it now, doesn't she, Joe Edwards? The three bowls she needs to play into. Hope for a good result. Got back bowls. Yeah, there's three chances there. Ideally, she'd like to go right between them and split them, wouldn't she? I think that you'll see Joe playing with uh, quite a considerable amount of weight here. That's what she's doing. She's on the probe as Joe Edwards gets two. And she's got a nice chance now. She next bowl she can play off that uh, bowl that's just the left of the jack. <laughs> Let's have another look at that from Joe Edwards. There we are. Got the shot bowl itself. There's only one down now. As we said earlier, it, uh, you, that you do have to pay that very definite weight to uh, to get a result in most cases. Given uh, Joe Edwards a rest now, hasn't it? A rest on that bowl, and uh, she would have shot. It's the yes. nice shoulder. There we are. There's the chance. The bowl just uh, to the bottom of the jack there. She can rest on that, and she knows she can get the shot. Drag the jack back if she happened to would help. Yes, that would be uh, very good. I so think she'll just be looking to use that bowl coming off it. Just around that front bowl? Yeah, just, just, just yeah. slipping past that front bowl and uh, sitting that uh, bowl would be great. So Joe Edwards on the draw, looking to just sit on the bowl. If she does, she will have the shot. Needs to miss that one. And she got it. She may have turned it over for another shot too, I think. It is two. Six one. Still, Stuart, it's only five ends uh, gone. They've still got uh, another ten ends. There's uh, only five the difference. Uh, plenty of room for uh, Joe and 
Sharon to uh, bridge that gap. Good blue sky and good news for South Africa too. 6-1 over New Zealand after five of those 15 ends. 15 end contest. See there just at the bottom of the screen, that's where the medals will be distributed. The three coloured planks there. Slightly raised on the green. There's the hardware on the greens so that the cameras won't damage the surface. Although what they're going to do with these greens is amazing. I understand one's going to be converted to a crown green, one's going to be converted to a croaky green. Because uh, crown, crown the bowls is the game that's played uh, in this area rather than the flat green. Yes, they don't uh, play much uh, flat green bowls uh, in this area at all apparently. Well, crown green is a smooth surface, very smooth surface. Well, down at the practice green, just uh, in, in Heaton Park itself, where we went to practice uh, prior to playing, uh, once the bowls had started, uh, there was two crown greens there, and I was surprised it actually not raised very much at all. Um, although they say it's a, a raise of about four feet, it doesn't certainly doesn't look that much. But it looked to be um, probably not as smooth or as clo cro closely cut as a uh, lawn green. The other thing I understand is, is that um, the jack's got a bias in it as well. And when you deliver the jack, it gives you an idea of the contour of the land. Oh, okay. That's the extent of my knowledge of crown green bowls, I might say. So don't ask me any more questions. No, I won't, Stu. They're all, fi all finding the uh, the track going down on that forehand quite good, aren't they? It's yeah, just they are. a just little variance in the weight. It, there's, there's no doubt that the best rink on the green is one you played on, Marlene. Yes, definitely. That uh, rink 10 played beautifully uh, yesterday. You know, there's not the precision on the draw, is there? They're not uh, hammering the jack, are they? are not bruising the jack at all. No, even though there's been a little rain, but I don't think that would have uh, made too much difference to the pace of the green. Oh, it was a nice slide, wasn't it? And another shot. Yes, as you heard from the skip for South Africa, Jill Hacklin, this is better for you because now there's a nice bowl which is uh, on the shoulder. She can play off that. See the one there, just to left of the jack. opportunity now for Jill to uh, to use that uh, jack high bowl there. Well just to left of the jack is a chance isn't it? That's the shot itself. <laughs> Stays down nicely on the bowl uh, Jill, doesn't he just like the yeah, uh, she's New cut Zealand girl? Hasn't coach. she? Yes. No. She hasn't played too many wayward ones so far in the match, though, has she? No, she's been running the area the whole time, hasn't she? She has. Plus, she's attacked well. I know that Sharon Sin will just love to turn that bowl over. Oh, just another yard. Really hard to on the script on these greens, those bowls in front you have to play a fair bit of weight to to move them. And that's when it starts to go out.
cut the green. Just not happening, is it, really? No, it's... Uh... Just, you know, just, just not, not much movement of uh, shots, not much uh, movement in the head. It's, um... Two shots. Yes, two shots. Yeah, one on the front, one on the yes. side. So a good scoring end at the moment. That's the same actually as in the singles. The peers are not allowed to go to uh, to the head until after they've played their third bowl. They're using that same rule. If you're not happy, give us a chamois, a bit of a hit against a pie. Oh, there, that's a lovely Shetland pony. Having a ride in the park. I understand there's a lot of development being in the park too in the future. They're going to have a, a, a cafe next to the lake and uh, they're going to have a new animal area. Yes, it's a, it's a great park. 610 acres, I understand, and the biggest park in the whole of, uh, municipal park in the whole of Europe. See, Jill is now, after a third bowl, gone and had a look at the head. That's the scoreline. You don't have two. One to the left of the jack, one just in front of the jack. And uh, there's opportunities to bring more into play. She's into the group. And no movement. Yes, a lot of heavy bowls there to uh, to move. So one bowl to go on this, the sixth end. Not a lot of action at all. She just needs to push forward that bowl just to at 11 o'clock. She's got two, she could get three. Kiwi girls would be happy with two though, because uh, there's uh, not much in the score line at this stage. Just a two. Fairly important there too for New Zealand because it means money that they get the jack and I guess so will they go short? Well it'll be interesting to see what uh, what length they decide to play. They're obviously uh, going to put the jack, uh, the mat, fairly well back. They're going short, you hear Joe Edwards saying uh, long or short, let's go short. We'll have a try on a shorter end. There it is there, you can see how far up she is uh, from the ditch. See the, uh, the pole there to mark the distance for the, uh, make sure the mat's up the two metres. The uh, markers and the, uh, the skips use that quite uh, a lot here to uh, make sure the jacks uh, as well two uh, metres from the ditch. People watching at home would probably uh, take note that the greens look very long and they are longer greens than what we have in New Zealand. Uh, yeah, it's a long way up, aren't they? It is, yes, and, uh, and the heavier surface. Okay, mate. Makes it very different conditions. 
great opener from Sharon there. We are, that's the distance from the ditch to the jack. So you can see that it's a long way up the green. Well, no, the lead uh, had any uh, difficulty with the, with the change in length. They both uh, settled onto it uh, for their first bowl, OK? Good Bye-bye. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's good. Behind the head, two good openers. This is a bit tighter, this uh, end here, after what was really a bit of a loose end going the other way. Yeah, just those uh, those short bowls make it uh, very difficult, as we uh, saw from the end. Come on. Just the jack. Touch up. It's got a bowl on the running. Sharon Sims. There's the marker now, the skip just putting that chalk mark on to say it's uh, alive if it goes in the ditch. Bowl in the running, the blue disc bowl opportunity to just to push it forward the blue disc bowl just moved it slightly so they've got different hands to play Marlene uh, the South Africans down that backhand New Zealanders down the forehand yeah still called Alan to play that other hand uh, onto that short bowl which you'd have to be playing a fair bit of weight to hit that short bowl up She's turned her on the other hand. Yes, I think she's decided that uh, she'd have to play too much weight, and uh, as we mentioned. Very good bowl. Two shots. Plenty of opportunities for Joe there, though. They've got that. Uh, not Sharon's bowl sitting nicely behind the jack if there's any movement there back. And Muir, the manager next to her, is the, uh, the sports psychologist for New Zealand. Just uh, stopped in the tracks there, Joe Edwards. Bowl in the running, chance to put it forward or rest on those bowls would be a good result too. Oh, I don't like his. What if she would play with just a fraction more weight, Marlene? Is that a shot she could play? Yeah, she could play. certainly play. Yeah, right up to those bowls and uh, get a slide off that, touch the jack, bring it back to that back bowl. There's lots of opportunities there for Joe. He's just learning to tie a bow. They look really excited about the bowls, don't they? <laughs> they do. Mamas, anyway. That's the bowl, and that is the shot. Oh, is it the shot? Jeez, went on a bit further than you'd think. It is the shot. It is the shot. Mm. Look at it again, the running and the running, played it up to the bowl and the running. That's beautiful line, and that is the shot.
Yes, it was well played. They had uh, several opportunities there of uh, turning that bowl in or just coming in to sit on those other bowls. Looking for the jack. A slice of heaven too. I think she got it. Just look at it again from Jill Hackland. Gets a slice of the jack and over towards the blue disc bowl. She's pretty pleased. I think she'll be very pleased. Chance just to rest on it herself or rest on that back bowl. Rest on the back bowl, just a bit too much weight. Oh, isn't he enjoying the bowls? She dragged him along to the bowls and he's fallen asleep. <laughs> isn't that lovely? I could see my wife allow me to do that at the concert. The concerts you go to, Stu, would be too good. There'd be no chance of you going to sleep. Well, Robbie Williams was pretty good. Didn't he go to sleep through that, I can tell you. No, I bet not. But I have been to sleep during the Orchestra, I can tell you. Oh, sunglasses on. A lot of sun at the moment, in fact, as I look across, there's a threat of rain, I reckon. In fact, in the hills over there, there's uh, rain. There we are, that's what I'm talking about, the rain, you can see it clearly, can't you, in the distance, over the hills, the rain falling. Yes, yeah, so let's hope it's heading in the opposite direction. Just a bit, oh, she's two down now, definitely two down. There we are, they're the scorers that uh, put it on the, the big screens. They've oh, been great, those big screens, to keep an eye on what's happening in all the other rinks around the place. Not that uh, when you're playing that you have time to look, but it's, if you're... There's uh, a screen there in the background, you're talking about Marlene. Yes, it's... Uh, I thought it was innovative when they finally realised they could put up about 10 rinks at once rather yes. than do them individually. That was the most important breakthrough. It was. I wonder if he'll wake up this guy. Oh, hello, they clapped. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what he was dreaming about. Probably a bitter at the pub? Maybe. Perhaps that's why he's having a sleep. Perhaps he had one too many last night. Eight to three is a classic shot there. Yeah. There's eight three. Yeah, it's just wandering along a bit at the game at the moment, isn't it? It's just uh, somebody needs to uh, grab it and take hold of it. It's just... Uh... There's that rain in the background again, a heavy laden cloud. It is just meandering along. Is that unkind to Marlene? But I just feel it's well, just, it just uh, meandering along. Do you, no, it's bigger do you than feel that um, they're, they're perhaps um, playing it a little bit ten well, a bit just, tentatively? Or, yes, no, it's, I mean, they've all played uh, good bowls, but... Uh, no one's taking control of no, it, are they? they're no, not, there's, no. there's no one saying, well, I'm going to get onto this jack and they uh, moving the jack, moving the bowls, making it happen. Uh, I don't think either of the sides are making it happen at the moment. The, the advantage for South Africa is they're nearly at halfway stage, well, they are, and they lead 8-3, so the first half of the game has definitely been South Africa's. And we'll just see now from this end whether one of these two teams really gets on the jack and starts playing shots and, 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 and moving bowls to score shots. Yes, New Zealand uh, really need to uh, perhaps pick up a couple of shots on the scene to, uh, so that the gap doesn't become too uh, too wide for them. Oh, it's water to that. 
Interesting that uh, Alan has uh, decided to uh, go down the backhand here. I think this is very difficult this way, and I think that's uh, partly due to the players not taking control of the jack because it's, it's very difficult. And there we are, that's what we're talking about, and uh, Ellen Cork has played it. And she has, yes, he obviously found that uh, that line that we felt was very elusive on that uh, backhand side. I think that what we're talking about probably, Marty, is consistency. Consistently yes. drawing their bowls very close to the jack or yes. close to the area. You know, they're just a little bit all over the place, aren't they? Well, uh, it just shows you that the greens are very challenging here. Oh, there's no doubt about that on this rink. And there we are, just to prove that uh, they've lift, lifted up a peg or two. It's a Sharon Sims with a touch-up. It's more like it. Let's look at it again. Sharon Sims on the draw and the jack. There it is. Flying past with her ball was um, Ellen Corker, the lead. That's about uh, six feet over the jack, her last ball. Playing with a little bit of weight. Here's the touch-up, the red disc ball for New Zealand. There's the last ball played at the bottom of the screen. It's got the gap and it's very handy. That's good bowling now. They're starting to see a little bit of uh, consistency on the draw. Yeah, that's uh, very good head building for New Zealand here. Start getting your jackets and your umbrellas ready because it's coming this way, Marlene. Yes, it's getting very dark, isn't it? Okay, no change. Yeah, still want it in. Go down the forehand, I think she is. Here comes the arrival of the rain that's uh, sweeping towards us. We know where it's coming from now, Marlene, don't we? We do. Just a scurry. You can hear in our fixed microphone people rushing to get their umbrellas, their jackets. There we are. They've got theirs up very quick. That lady's getting her red jacket on over that lovely pink top. Wouldn't want one of those in your eye, would you? One of the no, edges of the umbrella? It uh, looks a bit dangerous. Actually, the New Zealand uh, management uh, uh, did very well. They supplied all the players with an umbrella, and we've certainly uh, made for a lot of use of those so, uh, since we've been here in Manchester. I think some of the men in our team, it's the first time they've ever used an umbrella, but they've certainly uh, been happy to use it uh, over here. There's Patsy Jorgensen, part of the women's four. They've got a bronze medal for New Zealand. Now, Jill Hackland, slightly wooded, two shots to New Zealand, you can see there, one next to the jack, one just to the right of the jack. Plenty of opportunities too for Joe Edwards, pushed out down on those blue bowls. It's a nice combination, the hood and hat and also the sun visor. Well played. Very well played. Just the one, and here is Joe Edwards, one in and one out. She's looking for those two blue balls on the side, so she's still got a chance. She's got two balls to come. This is the heaviest rain of the day so far. Oh, a slice of hell. Three shots to New Zealand, a slice of hell from Jill Hackland. Let's have another look at this ball from Jill Hackland. Here it is, slices the jack into the red disc balls and three shots to New Zealand. Well, that was the shot that uh, Jo would have been looking to play uh, with her next bowl. And, uh... She can't believe it, but it's happened. Uh, jo Edwards with her last bowl. Does she want another shot? Yes, she does. That's four. Four shots, Joe Edwards. A very fine line. She's asked uh, Jill to play down that hand, isn't it? It's, uh, we've seen uh, in previous shots that it's... Uh, hangs a bit, doesn't hangs it? Hangs a bit, yes. Would 
Joe, it would be interested in just putting one in the running? That would, uh, it could be a very good idea. Well, so I guess she should come behind, like as she's suggesting there. I'd quite like to send the other hand in the running. Yes, I think, uh... That's even better. Right. As five shots. She wanted it behind, I think, but uh, what's wrong with another shot? 8-3 the scoreboard. SC Joe Edwards again on the draw. There, and... Oh, she wanted it, didn't she? As you quite rightly say, Marlene, there's a very fine line to, to get to the target. Yes, I think she's looking at playing the other hand now, Joe. There's the umbrella she spoke about, Marlene. Yes. Paul Girdler. On the right. Paul Smith on the left. Oh, she's got the other hand, the forehand. This is interesting. Did she make a difference? I don't think she did. Mm. Looks like uh, five to me. Looks a bit concerned. Let's another look at uh, this bowl. She just wasn't tight enough. Oh. She got an edge and... One, two, three, four. Mm, that looks very much like five, but I think uh, her lead, Ellen, made a, a big mistake in, in calling her third bowl down on that difficult uh, hand. Um, she would have been much better to have got her to draw in amongst those bowls with her previous bowl. So Joe Edwards has a chance of making another shot too. And uh, I guess it was look at um, the screen in the moment. We'll see the chance of her just uh, getting a rest down that forehand side. There it is. See the blue disc bowl just to the, the right of um, Sharon Sims? Come back from there, will it? No. One, two, three, four. That's so we just spoke prior to them playing this end, didn't we, about somebody grabbing an opportunity, and that's exactly what uh, the New Zealand girls have done. Feeding time. Five. Five shots. Well, a very, very big end that locked together eight all after eight ends. They must have heard us, do you think, Stu? Yes, must have. That, um, that milk there is not New Zealand milk. They're New Zealanders. It's a, a compound, I'm sure. There's some, uh, for some Palmerston North uh, fans there that have travelled over to uh, especially watch Sharon, uh, is, who's from Palmerston North. Oh, that's great. What a big five that was, eight all. Well, but they didn't listen to us after all, Marlon. We thought that something needed to happen, that the jack has gone into the ditch, and, the, and now it's South Africa, but they'll deliver the jack. That is just pouring down, as you can see in that picture there. Stu Butter nicely protected. I'm sure these conditions won't uh, worry Sharon and Joe at all. We've trained uh, in a fair amount of rain there at East Tamaki over the winter, so uh, they'll be well used to the, uh, the rain. A very big five has brought the game back. Even Stevens. Baby is woken up because mum got rather excited.
We've talked a lot about uh, when you uh, when you do score a big lumber like that is to make sure that you put the pedal down and uh, score again on the following end. It's uh, that uh, very often happens that a team scores a big number and then uh, and uh, drops a number on the next end. So the Kiwi girls will be very keen to uh, make sure that doesn't happen. happy with that, wouldn't they? They will be. Movement of the jack is to their advantage. Sharon Sims going to go down that backhand side again. Well played it very well too. A lot of advantage on the head to New Zealand. Got the back bowl as well, two back bowls. Looking very good for them on this end. So they've go, got rest and opportunities to get in first. That's a very good bowl, as Skip Jill Hackman says. Oh, both sides of the rink there coming this way appear to be playing quite well, don't Especially they? Especially that yes. length there, yeah, that three-quarter length yes. they seem to be. And a bit of turn two. Quite a good hit, this one. There's two in, under the one umbrella. She's a bit worried by the situation. So she, it's Joe Edwards looking to add to the count. has got a couple looking for another. And she has it. So that's a very good first up ball from Joe Edwards. A lot of confidence. It's very much a strong psychological game, isn't it, yeah, uh, Marley? When you get a five, you yes. lift your spirits a bit. Oh. Oh, a good try, too. and Jill and uh, Ellen Corker's uh, voice there at three. Need to get in there quickly this time. Good bowl. Very good bowl indeed. She had plenty to rest on though and she took advantage of it. That's the shot. Let's watch this from Jill Hackland. Got the rest and gets the shot. So for Joe Edwards, she just needs to push that through. Ellen's having a good look at it. She's not. Yeah, she thinks. Uh, she's one down now. Yeah, she thinks that the New Zealand. Well, from I think that, that, yeah, you yes. think so too. Yes, it looks like New Zealand's holding the shot there. She's got a big chance to push it through, hasn't she? Chance to push it through. If she's here, is she there? Oh, no. oh she might have. No, it's still one to red.
fancy that red disc bowl, don't you? I oh, definitely uh, shot to New Zealand, I would say, then, Stu. So it is locked together, eight all. Mm -hmm. After eight, so it's all the eights. Mm. That's a good ball. Let's see now who's got shot. Is it Fabian? He's in for one. Yeah, just the one to New Zealand. Gives a, uh, a reasonably wide target there to uh, just play uh, perhaps just a couple of feet away into, uh, into that area. There it is. Ooh. Just the wall has tight, isn't it? It is. Too close to call. Mm, really favour the New Zealand bowl. Well, it's tight. Yeah, I don't think it favours New Zealand bowl. Yep. That completes the end. We'll soon find out. Empire. Have a look at this. Certainly from our little circles there, it looked as though it just favoured uh, the New Zealand ball slightly, but obviously in a game as important as this, they're not going to uh, give the shot away with uh, without an umpire's measure. They do that a lot over here in UK. A lot of the players don't ma uh, measure at all. Very seldom do they measure themselves. They uh, they have one of the expert umpires come on and do the measuring. I was talking to Peter Phillips about that the other day and he said, well, that's not my style, I always like to measure. Yes, um, I'm fairly keen on measuring myself, <laughs> I must admit, although I didn't uh, at all It's a red today. bowl. It uh, meant the technology comes through yet again for us in the country position and it is one shot to New Zealand. They hit the lead for the first time in the match, 9-8 after 9. Is the shot for the red to side. Looking to keep to that longer length again. A bit of blue sky around now, which is encouraging. A bit brighter. Rain not quite as hard as it was earlier. We just don't want any f puddling, that's what we don't want. But uh, when I've watched these uh, greens when they've been flooded, uh, this area where they're playing on hardly ever gets much water on, which is a sign that it's a pretty good surface. A lot of the, uh, near the ditches, a lot of water there sometimes. Interesting there, Joe uh, calls out a yard. I thought she'd be in the metric car zone. Yes. Well, is the international term of uh, bowls uh, inches and feet and yards? Well, they use um, yards over here yeah, considerably yeah. more, but I mean, we always say 23 metres the yeah. jack has to be. Yeah. And, but uh, I must admit, uh, when I'm asking uh, for how far away a bowl is, I like to have the. But I am a lot older than Joe, though. Yes. This is the way that uh, New Zealand picked up that five last time. About the same lengths too. Might be just a little bit further. Yes, uh, just a fraction longer than uh, when they played down that way previously.
one shot now for South Africa. the good Max on, those two ladies, just uh, letting our viewers knowing in South Africa that uh, we will not give you any scores from the South African singles game because that's going to be played after this, it's being recorded and played after it, so we won't uh, give you any scores to uh, disappoint your viewing of that game later. Our director will probably just show you the, the scoreboard by mistake but we wish you good luck you're dead on purpose no we'll uh, do our best to make certain that we keep away from that game and that uh, the applause will only give you the end of the match rather than who's won it we hope Very good bowl. Well, he's really enjoying himself, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he loves the bowls. <laughs> Very good bowl, that last bowl of, uh, of Joe's. Just uh, let it slip past the jack there, so she's got a great opportunity uh, to uh, play onto the shot bowl there and uh, push the jack back. That's a shocker, isn't it? Now is a chance. This is what exactly Marlene's saying, playing down on that to blue disc bowl. Any movement of the jack, and New Zealand will be counting. That's the blue disc she's Looks after. A good track. Needs a slice. Oh, got the slice. Did you get the shot? Perhaps not. It's a good position, though, uh, for the New Zealand side. Here it is. Just needed to get the slide. Got it late and just didn't push through the blue bowl enough. It was a very well weighted bowl. She, yeah, it was beautiful. Better. That length is outstanding, isn't it? And I suppose for, for Jill Hackland, she wants to get there first. She's got a, she's got a tight line. Oh, well, she hasn't, has she? She's left it short. Yes. She had a great opportunity too. To Mac of red, very bright look here at uh, Heaton Park today. Different from black, isn't it? The black mm -hmm. Max. Wants to be on a good line. She's got a chance. She's played it. Oh, that's a beautiful bowl. Very, very good bowl. She loves it too. She's a fine player, Joe Edwards. Let's have another look at it. It always looked as though it was going to hit the blue disc bowl, didn't it? And sure enough, it tucks it next to the other red bowl. And he enjoyed it too, having a pint and enjoying the bowls. That's uh, Simon Borta, the uh, coach for South Africa. Also been in the commentary team when we've gone to South Africa.
But being a woman's game, of course, Simone, that's why you're invited in. They're oh, having a lovely little, lovely little cuddle, aren't they, those two? Yes. I hope the husband and wife. Wouldn't it be terrible if it was his girlfriend? Oh, yes. Oh, there we are. We've got the cheese cutter on and uh, the hat. He might be in his own supporters, black and white. Yes, could very well be. But he's not. Looks quite uh, happy. It would be nice to have some uh, really fine weather for this end uh, of the bowls. Just unpleasant. Canadian supporter. They did well on the fours, women's fours. Yes, they did. Uh, silver medal for the Canadian fours. They'd be uh, very happy with that. Stu Butter, the New Zealand coach. So we've seen Simon Botta before. So that's Stu Butter, the New Zealand coach. So both coaches at the end of the mat. There he is. A former international player himself, Stu Butter, and I think he's finding it very difficult uh, playing every bowl that uh, every one of his players plays. So. He's having a hot toddy. Got a big task in front of her here, Jill, to um, to uh, cut the score down. Or so, Jill Hacklin. She's three down, isn't she? And yes. it's swinging across. She's not going to change it, unfortunately. That's a big count. A lot of New Zealand supporters behind the. There's three out, now they're going to look for the fourth, this will be interesting. Could be four. Yes. It is four, let's go to the lollipops. There's some um, successful... Yeah, there's four there. Well, the Kiwi girls have certainly taken, uh, grabbed that opportunity and taken the game uh, at this point, haven't they, Stu? They certainly have. With that four and the five, uh, the South African girls would be uh, more than disappointed. With well, them. they've scored in three mm. ends now, haven't they? Mm. Five, one and a four. Yes. Mm. Ten shots in three ends. Well, that gentleman thinks his umbrella is not going to be used again, but I can assure you, keep it close by, because all oh, this nice blue sky at the moment, though. We know where the weather's coming from because we saw it come last time, didn't we? So we've got a blue sky for a while. And we've got a 13-8 advantage to New Zealand in the gold medal match. Sharon obviously got something in her pocket there just to uh, put on her fingers to uh, help the grip on the bowl there because in these rainy conditions it can get uh, a bit difficult to hang on to the uh, bowl. It was interesting this morning that the Malaysian players, Alina, she had uh, a warmer in her pocket, oh, a, war a hand warmer, yes. Plus the other thing that was amazing in that game was that she kept the score in every end. Yes, yeah, she does. She always does Why that. Why would she, she do that? She writes a little uh, note. I'm not quite sure exactly what she does, but she writes a little, uh, little note after every ball she plays. Mm. It's a good opening from Sharon Sims, you can see there. And a pretty good reply, too, from Ellen Corker. Yeah, that was interesting. As we, uh, the television crew asked her, what have you got in your pocket? She said, I've got a hand warmer. Yes, and obviously the conditions here are not, uh, not as warm as Malaysia, so... They're making it happen now, the New Zealand side, aren't they? They are. They were just sort of drifting, and all of a sudden they've uh, really booted it into another gear, the New Zealand team. And South Africa, I think they just need to steady their ship a bit, need to get back into the game, stop this run of shots for New Zealand. And she has done it, hasn't she? Exactly what was prescribed for Ellen Corker, right next to the jack.
supply now from Sharon Sims. Knows if she's up, playing with a bit of weight, she can push it through for three. Still plenty of time, but to want to get in first now again is uh, Alan Corker. The movement of that bowl off the jack lever would be of a lot of assistance. Not here. Now the chance that uh, is all the New Zealanders taking a video is uh, Paul Smith, the sports psychologist. And Muir, the manager to her left. That will be feeling a little less um, tense with the turnaround and the scoreline there. I guess even though that's in the running, that last bowl, well, Joey was good to um, look going down the backhand side. Not bad, is it? Two shots. So she can get a slide off those, can't she, to get the shot bowl too. She and can. she can move the bowl from uh, left to right as we look at it on the screen. So I guess that uh, she'll maintain that uh, backhand. Plenty of opportunities again. This is the thing with bowls on the head. You do get the chances, don't you? You do, yes. It's no different on this end here. There we are, the opportunities to slide off those three bowls grouped together. If you get the jack, it'll come back and she's got a bowl back there. Decided to go down the forehand, the backhand side. She can reach it that way. There's the other chance too, wasn't it? Yes. This is. Well, that's yes. brilliant bowl. That's right. Had two chances, and she took the other chance. Decided to come down that backhand. Now she's in a very strong position. Here it is. Here gets the edge and very close to the shot. Yes, yeah, she had lots of opportunities coming down on that backhand, uh, backhand side. Very determined young lady. Joe Edwards from the United Club. Now a chance for Jill Hackland. Just to rest it out. Well, she went with that because she's going to fly across the front. So exactly the same I thing. I think uh, a little bit of tension is getting to Jill a bit. She seems to be uh, playing the odd short bowl now, whereas uh, early in the match she was staying down on a bowl and uh, everything was reaching the head. She just, uh, with that turnaround and score line, just feeling the tension a little. Opportunity here, Jill Hacklin, to get the rest on that uh, Jade Bowl there, the Jade Disc Bowl, but she's got to have some weight. That's very short. Yeah, four seconds. Yes. Big drive coming from Joe now. So, Joe Edwards of New Zealand with a probing shot towards the head, playing with weight. She just, mm, oh, did she get the result? She was just, oh, I think she's got the shot. I think she's got the shot. Not there again. I wonder who has got shot. Yes, they can afford to play weight up through there and they've got all the bowls at the back. 
Well, it looks like mm. this African bowl, doesn't it? It does. It's very close, but it looks as though it favours them just a fraction. Yeah, it definitely does. But as Sharon said to uh, Joe, there's uh, lots of opportunities playing up through there. Jack, back is uh, all good for the New Zealanders. Some great sportsmanship too from Jill Hackland. She applauded it. There we are. Clean as a whistle. Jack into the ditch. Monkey in the cage. And it is shot. A look of determination and contentment from Joe Edwards. I reckon she's got one. She's definitely got two. Here's the Jack. And there's the second shot. So it is Jill Hackland looking for a say. There's a lot of wood between her and the... She could promote another of the New Zealand bowls. Our best chance of seeing probably the shots here is the lady with the lollipop. She's probably going to tell us first. There's the jack and there's the shot bowl. And we're going to get the umpire in. As so there's three already. As we spoke earlier, Stu, uh, bowls up the front uh, very rarely come into play, and that, uh, that just proves that uh, the bowls at the back, you've got the opportunity of playing to them, playing the jack into the ditch, etc. They're looking for the fourth shot now. They have three already, the New Zealand side. A lot of disappointment that, uh, sorry, a lot of disappointment that Jill Hackman just got wooded. She need to have an opportunity getting somewhere near the uh, ditch. I'm not sure that she had the weight stew anyway, do you? No. She's about a couple of feet short. She might have cut out the fourth shot, mightn't she, if she'd uh, just slipped past. Yes. Yes, uh, the girls have certainly grabbed the game. That's uh, five, ten shots they've scored... Uh, in the previous three ends, and it looks like it could be another four. That could be 14 shots and four ends. They've certainly grabbed the game, haven't they? Yeah, it's funny, wasn't it? It's just when we were talking about it. We yes, were just, we just were. discussing yes, who was going to get the initiative first, who was going to you know, make a charge for the victory, and the New Zealanders put the foot down. The sun came out as well, and uh, looking very strong. Four yeah. shots. Scoreline reads 17 to 8, 17 to 8 Sharon Sims and Joe Edwards of New Zealand over Ellen Corker and Jill Hackland of South Africa. 11 ends gone. There's the four shots. And here's the scoreline. 17 to 8. They've blown it apart after it was 8 all after 8 ends. Blue sky too. Lovely and blue now. Where the weather's coming from. Don't be surprised if another shower comes through, but uh, we're going to get play over for the day. That's the main thing. They've really gone deep now, the New Zealanders. They put the jack on the two metre mark. Matt's just out about three metres. So they've gone long. And we're now looking at four ends, nine the difference. That's two and end, Marlene. That's not that hard to defend. No, I think uh, the colour of the medal of gold for New Zealand is looking very uh, promising. Especially, uh, they've obviously thought about it and uh, they've uh, recognised that the uh, South African girls are perhaps just struggling a bit with their weight uh, in the last few ends. So, uh, uh, it's been a great idea to play those long ends. Well, what a great opener too from Sharon Sims. That's a very good bowl first half. Full length end. Bowl just behind the jack. Widening up a bit the Piers final here at Heaton Park in Manchester. The last event on the program at the Bowls. Now Ellen Corker's reply. Left it short and wide. Sharon Sims. Very consistent off the front. 
Yeah, she's played great the whole way through the tournament as, as her playing partner, Jo, so yeah. far. Been a great combination. Jo's just been able to produce that uh, excellent attacking shot, hasn't she, yes, when it's needed? Yes, she has, yes. Well, you would have thought that was now, but that's a very good goal. Touch at two. That's two fine openers. When you've got a lead of nine, that's exactly the start you want. Playing with weight. That always narrow. And she'll lose that into the ditch, will she? Yes, she will. Yeah, what um, Joey was just saying here, just try and take that shoulder away, Marley. Yes, that's right. She just wants her to turn that ball through. That so that uh, there's virtually no target for uh, the South African girls to play to. Here we go, Jake. Oh, what oh, about this for lead balls? That's magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. Yes, yeah, so on, on the full length end, it is. It's just. Uh, Magic balls from Sharon. Well, it's going to swing across. And it does. Into the ditch. Does it go? It's into the ditch too. A lot of woods going into the beach today. Sharon Sims with a fourth. Can she make it the perfect four? Well, she can. She definitely can. That's even better back there. That's a fantastic bowl. Absolutely perfect bowling from Sharon. So Ellen Corker, again, running at the head. Oh, she didn't get a good result, but she got second shot. That's good enough for her. She'll be pleased with that. I think uh, Joe and Sharon will be feeling like they're coming down the home straight at this point in time. We're playing bowls like that. Look at that lovely church yes. in the village. Magnificent on the skyline. Great shots from our top camera. Just a beautiful church, like a lot of nice architecture around. In fact, the uh, the manager of the New Zealand uh, bowls team, who's grown a beard, he's taking a lot of interest in architecture now. He think he's he thinks he's an artist or an architect. He never showed any interest before, but now he's got a beard. He's talking about museums and artwork and oh, churches so? and cathedrals and oh, facades. Well, I don't think he's going to necessarily go to church, but he just likes looking at them now. Just the one shot to New Zealand. Considering what he's been through, Peter Keane, in the last couple of weeks, I can understand why he turned to religion. Sharon Sims, a chance just to push through that blue disc bowl for three. Of course, it's Joe Edwards playing the bowl, but uh, just a bit narrow. Oh, might be good enough for a shot. <laughs> the shot is there, isn't it, just to push through on that blue disc ball? It is, yes, you can get a uh, push through that, coming off it, take the shoulder away. She played it pretty well too, the skip for South Africa, just needed to... So the thing that her difficulty is, is that uh, all the... Oh, that's a lovely shot there. Here's the two greens still going. 
Go Edwards, he's on the run, looking for that blue ball. Sharon Sims likes it, and she's got it, she's played it. Yes. Three shots. Let's look at it again. Joe Edwards pushing through the second shot ball for three. There we are. And on the back from Sharon Sims. School line at the moment, 17-8, holding three. They've really raced away, haven't they, from the eighth end, where we remember it was eight all. Yes. And it's not really that the South Africans have played poorly in the second half. It's just that uh, the, the, the pressure has really gone on from Joe Edwards. Yes, uh, both uh, Sharon and Joe have really put their foot on the accelerator in those last uh, few ends. There we are, just sing it again. Didn't she play it well? Great ball. She's got to play in tight, doesn't she? Yes. I think all she could possibly hope for a second shot. She needs to just slip past and perhaps uh, uh, she gets the back bowl and, uh, and comes forward. Uh. Shammy in her hand. Jewel Hackland. But with four ends to go, they really need to score and they can't really afford to drop any shots, really. Can they? No. They, they really need to score on the end, I think, uh, Stu, don't you? I definitely think so. I think with that score here, that's gone. Mind you, we've seen a few sixes and sevens, even an eight. Well, oh, she's given another shot away, hasn't she? Well, she'd be so disappointed with that. Yeah, there's the one she gave away, the third shot. Grimaces, doesn't she? It's a very big score. Oh, that's a five. What about that? There we are, five shots to New Zealand. They lead by 22 to eight, just three ends remaining. So I don't think they'll be playing the full 15 in studio. Yes, I thought I saw you doing some calculations, Marlene. <laughs> they get 16.24. If they get three here, it's all over. It is. Will the South Africans have to fight back? They won't give it away easy. Great opener. Oh. When you get that lead and you can just get down and let it flow, it just makes all the difference. Just saw that picture there. That was uh, where the weather's coming from. So blue sky in that area. Looks great now to complete the match. A lot of sunshine. A lot of spectators now got rid of all the rain wear. That no, would just finish off the day nicely, Stu, if it uh, could be fine for the medal ceremonies, wouldn't it? <laughs> you want to see that goal, don't you, Marlene? Yes. Oh, well, the last time it was a gold medal, I think 1990 in the pairs. Murray yeah. Watson and Judy Hart. Four women. Yeah. Nice to think, uh, Marlene, that you're all going away with a medal on the New Zealand side. Yes, it's uh, very pleasing for the women all to uh, take a medal home. trip into the sand.
I don't know where the sand did come from, actually. I don't think I'd have brought it all out from Eastbourne or Brighton. Probably Blackpool. Maybe, but it's uh, it's been great underneath the, the sand base because uh, they've drained absolutely amazingly well. I think they've got so little beach around uh, the coastline that they're not allowed to move the sand off the beach. Oh, probably not. I know in Wellington and Oriental Bay we were so short of sand at one stage that we took it off the boats that came from England uh, which they used for ballast. Oh, and they put that sand on the beach. Thank goodness they're spending about uh, three million to get some real sand now. Is it? Joe Edwards and the backhand side, plenty of room to draw shot. Well, okay. comes the ball from Joe Hackland. Two gets a bit of a diversion. Back as bowl. Probably won't matter because there's nothing around the jack at the moment. Tons of room to draw a shot. He's got a big chance here. What about that shot from Joe Edwards? Shot itself. She's still got a mind on her task that she needs to uh, to just finish this game off. Not relaxing at all. It's always narrow that bowl. You leave it alone, Joe. Come to here. So Sharon Sims says just a position bowl now will be fine. And she's played it brilliantly, hasn't she? Just matches that other jade or blue disc bowl. So Jill will be quite happy just to tighten it up a bit. Jill Hackland. It's always wide, wasn't it? Or he went wider as it went past. Back bowl, but you've got to move the jack a long way to get that into play. Gave it a big dump, she said. Well, she hasn't dumped many. No, certainly not. Well, it could come. Uh... <laughs> Got a chance here for the jack. She has the jack and a slice of heaven too. And Jill shakes her head, even though she played a great ball there. I think she's uh, three shots. resigned to the fact that uh, it's a big task in front of them now to pull that score back. Uh, 22-11. Nice blue sky and a big scoreline for New Zealand against South Africa, 22-11.
just two ends to go and uh, it's 11 the difference that South Africa need to score three on this end to stay in the count and a chance to win but 11 the difference over two ends that's uh, five and a six to uh, just level up it's a pretty forlorn hope but uh, they've gone short this time the South Africans with the jack just to try and uh, unsettle the New Zealanders I thought they may have moved the mat up the green a little bit to try and uh, New Zealanders have been finding their line perfectly. But, uh... So South Africa need to score three to play the last end. Thunder I heard then, I thought Stuart? it might be thunder too. Yes. Definitely wasn't uh, someone walking past. Come on. Bye -bye. Very good opening from both leads. Three balls all around the jack. Good end, well played by the South African side. They've got two. They need three shots to go to the last end. Second shot, so they've just got one now. the score line earlier on Stu they just uh, the New Zealand girls played it patiently they never dropped more than a two in those early ends even though they uh, they weren't able to score they just made sure it was only one or two and then when their opportunity came they just took it didn't they Stu? Certainly did. Yes. There's the blue sky of Manchester now and there'll be some of the last pictures we see from the cameramen up in the tower. When are we terrible if they left them up there? Forgot about them. <laughs> Everybody left the green. Is there more than one person up there, or is it just the no, one? No, just the one person. Oh, okay. okay. Just the one shot by the look of it on screen. Yep. Just they're going through the motions now, really. It's a very good uh, head. A lot of bowls on the head, uh, Marlene. It's obviously playing very well at this length. Yes, it is. Corker, as you'd expect, still playing hard right to the end. Oh, New Zealand has probably the shot now. Tell us, Sharon. One down, there we are. No one made Thanks for that. Okay. 
looking at uh, taking any options away that the South Africans have got to score uh, a number, which is uh, really important. Just a bit of movement. There they are, matching some of the bowls at the back. Yes. Just one down. Of course, the Sharon Sims and Joe Edwards will know that they can concede a couple, but uh, if they don't concede three, they've won the gold medal. With an end to go, comprehensive performance again by the New Zealand pair. That's New Zealand bowl that goes forward, no change. Just drop it in the front, that's the the choice of Sharon Sims. Played it pretty well too. So one ball to come from Jewel Hackland. She needs to score three. And she's only got one. She could play onto that blue disc bowl in front of the jack and just push that through there and uh, just drop it through and hit the jack towards the two blue disc bowls. So here it is uh, from Jewel Hackland looking to change the result. Does nothing at all. Shake hands time. So it's the glitter of gold for Sharon Sims and Joe Edwards at Manchester. Absolutely superb performance from Joe and Sharon. They've just looked like gold medal winners all week, uh, Stu, haven't they? It's just uh, uh, a great sight to see them out there uh, enjoying the moment. What a marvellous performance from the bowler from Palmerston North, that's Sharon Sims. The bowler from Nelson, that's...